Hello everyone and welcome to another Doctor Who review with me, John Parker, and me, Jack Kerling, and me, Cody Crudoti. Well, here we are again. We are back doing the Doctor Who uh, series eleven reviews, and wow. Um, so yeah, that was a pretty interesting way to start series eleven. Um, overall, personally, I loved it. I I thought it was it was brilliant. Now the um, the storyline followed the introduction of court of uh, with the companions, uh, Ryan, Sinclair, uh, Yaz, Graham, Grace. Now the Doctor, currently going through post regeneration, crash landed into a well abandoned train, uh, which then followed on by a tentacle type scout thing. Um, I called it a scout to begin with, and I think that was that the right way to describe it. Do you think scout? Um, maybe, I guess. Uh, it's, 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 it's really device. Device. Yes, that is the best term for it. Yeah, because it was essentially was a scout. It was mm. used by this, uh, what the hell did he call himself? Tass... Tass... Oh, I don't know, Tim, Tim Shaw. Tim Shaw. Tim <laughs> Shaw. <laughs> yes, the Doctor did um, start taking the piss a little bit. Uh, that was it, John. Tim <laughs> Tim Shaw. Tim Shaw. Tim Shaw. Tim Shaw. Tim Shaw. Tim Shaw. <laughs> Tim Shaw is easier. <laughs> but yes, this uh, bound not a bounty hunter, but um, That's what he, was. he was a bounty hunter. All oh, right. So oh, this. Well, no. Hang on, it wasn't. It, was, a, it was more like a sporting no, was, sporting hunter or yeah, something. Yeah, it was. They were hunting someone who had been designated as a trophy. Yeah, because he, this creature, uh, this weird hunter, he wanted to kind of prove himself to his species and become the king or the ruler. And of course, the one way to do that uh, very quickly and very easily was to cheat using that tentacly scout thing to try and pick out the target, the human target that had been tagged, and then to take it back as a trophy. Now, the the story I thought it was, it was a decent story. I I enjoyed the story and I enjoyed seeing Jodie Whittaker for the first time as the Doctor. Mm-hmm. However, the how can I des- describe this? Even though I did like the, the the story, I did feel like there was a lot going on. Mm. Probably, a, perhaps a little bit too much. Um, I like the fact that we were thrown into it at the beginning, but perhaps towards the middle, it was a little bit rushed. I did start. The th- I okay so. I, yeah, I can see what you're saying. I think that the you, I, there was moments like most of it was like good pacing, good pacing. You know, yeah. starting off with the characters, it was yeah. starting to make it up. And every and again, it would be boom, 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 and then we'd already like skipped a few things. Like for example, I mean, uh, you remember when she appeared on on top of where, where the, the, the of where the uh, scout thing was? Uh, well, I yes. thought that was a very big jump from them trying to find it to all of a sudden they're there. And I know it was explained that they'd been told the location, but we didn't see any like indication that they knew where it was. They just appeared there. And then she said, oh, thanks to the bus driver. And I, I thought that was a little bit quick. And I noticed a few of those th- times that the episode that happened, these things that like skipped a bit to try and hurry things yeah, on a bit. Yeah. And I felt that that was a little tiny bit weird, but... But I suppose when you consider it, the way it was executed was perfectly fine. Because mm. I, I, to be honest, any other way, I think would have properly spoilt well, it. So... It kept us from being bored because yes. it kept us on our toes. Like what's happening? Now? Did you notice that the entire episode as well? Seeing so Akinola's music just very slowly in the background, just a hum. It kept you on suspense. It felt like you was always yes. waiting for that, something new. That's that's something I want to comment on. Actually, the music yeah. in previous series. Mm-hmm. It seemed like to me that the music was getting louder and the mm. voices were staying quiet. Yeah. So at some points, the Doctor would be talking and then you'd have fucking... I am the Doctor playing at a thousand volume and you just see his yeah. mouth moving because you can't hear it. Yeah. In this episode, I like that you there was music, but it wasn't so loud and you could hear what the hell was going yeah, on. It was atmospheric. Yeah, yes. right, you got a good point in there because um, you you saying you saying that Cody actually, I do feel like the editing process 
I actually felt like the editing in this, both visual and audio, uh, was well maintained, well thought out. Because, like you said, Cody, um, in the past, we had instances where the volume would just blast up just randomly for no apparent reason. But in this, we had more of a build mm. to kind of help us understand our characters, understand the story. Mm. And it, yeah. it, it literally helped. The, the music, the editing style, the cinematography, the fantastic mm. use of lighting, flipping hell, those god rays, the entire thing. Cinematography. It felt like I was watching a film condensed into a TV show, literally, which is probably what he was going for. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it, really, it really worked. I really, really enjoyed it. It was. It was. Visually as well, uh, visual effects, mm-hmm. everything. Much better. Yeah, yeah. I think they went for a different company, didn't they, doing the visual effects? So, yeah, yeah proper, they did. Proper production company, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, um, the characters uh, and actors' performances. Now, I suppose we, we can definitely say for certain, um, Jodie Whittaker's performance as the 13th Doctor. I had to actually count then. Um, mm. What do we think? Absolutely perfect. I, I, I was right when I thought that um because i originally had dodgy feelings about it from the trailers oh yeah and yeah. i remember saying like uh, i'm sure it's been took out of context mm-hmm. and i was right the way that it was presented the bits that i've seen in the trailers that we saw in the it was episode different. yeah it made sense and i was yeah. like i understand now it makes it, it clicked and i thought that she was fantastic really really good yeah yeah i mean i, I will be perfectly honest i had I had doubts from the very beginning, um, and I was ne- I wasn't too sure. I was in two minds over and over and over and over again, but seeing it f- um, for the f- seeing a performance for the first time, doubts have been have been destroyed. So I'm I am satisfied. Yeah. I am satisfied. Just uh, the 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 costume. I still don't. I don't know about the costume. I I really yeah, it's don't. A, it's a little bit of a Colin Baker moment. I mean. On. The next episode, when they're on that desert place with those soldiers and that army, I mean, she sticks it like a bloody sore thumb. Then again, so <laughs> do the rest of them. But, y- you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I will say about the outfit is I like... This was a point that um, Rasa brought up in the previous conversation before we moved. Uh, I did like that she went to a charity shop to get it. Because mm, yeah. now it seems to make sense how it's all just randomly <laughs> thrown together. Yeah. That's a good point. Is that she didn't go and, and buy a designer outfit. She just uh, went to a charity shop. And remember what she said before it? I haven't been shopping fem- for female clothing in a long time. I was that thinking, was whenever. Funny, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so that could also be an indicator that she doesn't know what she really wants. She just thinks, oh, that looks good. Because she doesn't actually know it's brand new to her. You know. Yeah. I think that's a good yeah. explanation for it. Yeah. But no, I mean, oh, it was uh, it was a, a really good episode. The introduction of the companions as well, I thought was, mm. was pretty good. Yeah, we've um, got detailed analysis. We've got detailed information about Ryan Sinclair. Um, we know a bit about... Um, I'm not sure about Yaz. I don't think we've got much about Yaz, though. We know not yet, no. We know, we know we've she's got a least. little bit. We, we know, know that, that her and Ryan have known each other for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And so. um, we know a little bit about Bradley Walsh's character. Um, he's still got a bit of a question mark over his head, but we know that uh, he's in remission for cancer. Yep. Uh, that he was the husband of the nan. Yep. And um, what else do we know? I have an issue with um, Bradley Walsh's character. What's that? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'd, see, the thing is. I've never seen the man in anything else apart from the chase, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I cannot get out of my head that I'm waiting for him just to go, the chase is all. <laughs> because his, I don't know, well, his okay. acting style isn't, it doesn't seem that good to me. Well, it I, seems like it's just Bradley Walsh talking. Well, yeah. hang on a sec. Well, I have actually got a point to make with that. Now, I did read on Twitter, I think, or some, anyway, I saw somewhere where somebody said, Oh, I don't know about how he could be cast for, for, for this. You know, he's he's a he's a bit of a comedian. You know, he, he doesn't suit these. Roles. Well, actually, no. He was known for Law and Order UK. He's really good at doing serious acting. And as we saw in Doctor Who, 
you know, he can do it. It can yeah. make it feel like he can do a normal character. It weren't and bad. It, and it, I thought he hit the nail on the head. Perfect. Oh, no. I, I wasn't saying he was complete rubbish. Oh, it's no, just, no. It's yeah. ingrained in my head that he's associated with that. And because yeah. he's not put much effort into changing his voice, mm -hmm. I, well, just, made it a bit more I can't look then, past it. It's, he made it a bit more cockney, he's saying, yeah, hasn't he? Because I don't think no. he... Uh, it, it, it looked to me like he was emphasising that a bit. Because well, it doesn't normally sound that strong. I suppose now, being as, obviously, Grace has died, he's now got more of a bigger responsibility to take care of, of Ryan now. Yeah. So perhaps his character will build over the series. So, who knows? Now, of course, we didn't get to see the TARDIS... Um, no. I was hoping we'd see at least the, uh, the exterior, but I didn't realise the TARDIS had actually dematerialised uh, to a completely different planet, apparently, um, mm -hmm. which we didn't even see in the well, next episode. Actually, so. uh, that's actually a good connector, thank you for talking about that, because we found out in this episode that this Doctor is a lot more um, uh, hands-on, building, likes to th thinks that she can create fantastic... Um, uh, devices and obviously she built the sonic screwdriver which seemed to work for her fine yeah. so uh, but that that machine at the end there didn't quite go to plan because she thinks she's no, going to see the tardis to and got that into space which i'm not quite sure how they're going to get out but i'm sure well i mean corny thing with, <laughs> so, with, but you know the the laws and and the nature of the universe by rights they should be dead yeah, pretty quickly. So, so we'll see how that pans out next episode. Un unless the Doctor managed to figure out something or do something instantly, I do not know. Probably. Yeah. I mean, she must have accounted that there was a slight possibility that the TARDIS was not actually on a planet, but somewhere in orbit, perhaps. So. Yeah, like, it could be that the TARDIS is there. Well, it was there. And yeah. then just appeared, and the TARDIS is already orbiting. So I like, assume. Of power. Yeah, yeah. I, I assume she's accounted for that factor, and therefore has got a plan B or C if things would fall over, which they did. So mm -hmm. who knows? But um, so yeah, an interesting episode overall. Yeah. So. Oh, um, final another point. Just yeah. Before we move on. Um, the theme music and the title sequence ending. Oh, yes. The ending yes. sequence. Yes. The, 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 I, I, I will say my point first, um, which I yep. know isn't the most popular point. Um, I do like the music. Um, I did want to, I, I did uh, focus on listening to it a bit on the ending credits, and I do actually like it. I do, I did think it's a, a good change. Um, but from a musician's perspective, I kind of wanted to hear a bit more. I was going to say bass, but more, more oomph, just a bit more, like it starts off like as we heard, and then mm -hmm. a bit more bit more mus uh, instruments, shall we say, I don't know how to put it, uh, but a bit more oomph. Yeah. Uh, and I, I thought there was a bit too much percussion in it. It sounded a bit too, I don't know, tinny. But uh, again, it probably will grow on me. But uh, Well, I mean, we, we got a bit of a snippet, plus they kind of um, mashed it by the sound of it, because obviously they put that preview at the very end, mm. which was a very interesting preview. To be honest, um, I wasn't really quite expecting that because I kept seeing all these really, names really come text. up, uh, like metallic text. No, I mean the actual pre the the video preview. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the with, whole, with the whole everyone, thing with everyone's whole... names. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to see pe people's names. I thought we was going to get a coming soon trailer. I, we did. I thought it. that was a bit weird, to be honest, to have a list of everyone who's ever going to be in well, the series this year. John, we didn't really get a. Uh, well, after really. that happened, they showed the next time trailer. Yeah, for but the next episode. normally they kind of show a trailer. Well, we already got a trailer for the series, I know that, yeah. But, well, yeah, I, I just thought the, the name part was interesting. Mark Addy's going to be uh, in the series well at some point, which I didn't realise. Mm. Yeah, I've seen him in quite a few things before. Um, the others I don't quite know. So, actually, Mark um, Addy was the only one I knew. I saw that Lee Mack... Yes, was, was in there. He's a comedian, so I'm not entirely oh, sure. Yeah, uh, okay. what he's got to bring to it. Hey, you might be, hey, once yeah. again, like Bradley Walsh, you know, you might got to do a serious role. Oh, to be yeah. fair, I've seen Lee Mack doing proper acting. Yeah, well, I say mm -hmm. proper acting. He's been in his own sort of show, mm -hmm. and he can act. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's so northern, the, so the, that's more of the cast that's northern. The <laughs> fi final, 
the final point is that the uh, we haven't seen the title sequence yet, but we have seen what we think will be part of the title sequence, which is that um, video effect at the end of the end, end credits, which, yep. while it was blurred, um, gives us an idea of where what they've gone with. And I, I think that those concepts... Vortex. Yes, and I think that the concepts that we saw on YouTube, the, specifically the ink ones... Um, and those types of 2D art, I think that might be where they got the uh, the idea from. Perhaps. We haven't got, obviously, official confirmation I've of that. I've watched one or two con um, little fan concepts on YouTube. I, haven't, I mean, I haven't seen quite uh, many. So, um, But the the background kind of reminded me a lot of the... Actually, two, two things. One, um, Tom, Tom Baker's total sequence, but um, more deeper, darker colours. Mm -hmm. than what we had in here's mm. and also it reminds me of the dv uh, the uh the dvd blu-ray intro for the 50th anniversary as well it actually reminded me quite quite a lot like that as well mm -hmm. so yeah at, at the very end of the credits on the 50th on the 50th anniversary um yeah it reminded me of that quite a lot as well so mm, it seems to be more like a, like a, a f fluid type effect yes Exactly, which is why Fluid I was reminded of the Something like mm. that, yeah. Very interesting indeed. So, um, yes, uh, anything else you guys want to add? And give our oh, verdicts? Uh, that's about it, really, I think. Yeah. Not really. She's, a, she's got a lovely comedic act. She's got a lovely comedic side to her, as well as the serious side, and I think that's good. Yeah. That, you know, most of the time we saw most of us is serious, but... Um, some of the things that she came out with while she was going through her little, uh, I'll say, regenerative process, you know, while she was on the sofa and what have you, and when she got up and what she said and, and she fell over. and The things that she, the way she came out with it, I think that that was good because it showed that she could, she could make us giggle a little bit, like the old, uh, the previous doctors have done, as well as be serious. So, mm -hmm. so definitely got good, uh, yeah. good acting still there. So, um, John, out of ten... What would you rate episode one for series 11? I was blown away and uh, it completely destroyed the dates, as you say, uh, that mm. we had. Um, and I'm really excited for this series now. And I am going to give the starting episode uh, to introduce this new era, yeah, a solid 10. Oof. Yep. I really like it that much. Ooh, we need Damn, you're bold. For that. <laughs> yeah, fire you're bold yeah. for that, aren't you? I know, I, I liked it that much. <laughs> I really am happy with it. Okay, no, that is fair enough. Um, Cody, out of ten, what would you give? Um, well, I mean, this episode was either going to be the start of something really good mm -hmm. or the start of a massive flop. Yeah, yeah. And Definitely. I think it is the start of something good. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were parts of it that I thought were really good. But the start was a bit slow with with him oh, riding right. his bike. I don't understand why that was relevant, right? I mean, I, I see that it was relevant, mm -hmm. but from the point of view of someone who's just started watching, I don't care about someone who can't ride their bike. <laughs> I think that was just introducing the family, though, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, but I, you know, I understand that they, they had to do it to introduce the people, and it did lead on to the entire the entire story. Mm-hmm. But at a first glance, you sat there and you're like, why am I watching a grown man who can't ride a bike? <laughs> I mean, otherwise, yeah, it was good. And I'll pro probably my vote for the entire episode is an eight. An eight? Okay. Because there were parts of it that left you sort of like, well, I don't see why you've done this. No, that is perfectly fine. So, I mean, I I loved the episode, and like you said, this was either going to be a make or break for the entire series, and I think we can safely say that it it's it's the start of a good make. I don't want to be um, too optimistic with this, because, I mean, it is just one episode. It is mm. one element for many other things to come. So, most of my doubts have gone... But I still want to kind of hold back a little bit and just at least give at least two, um, yeah, two more episodes until I can have a solid, firm view on how the series is going to pan out and what I really feel about it. 
So, I mean, for me, uh, in regards to this episode, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. Okay. There is, it there was is a good one start. more point. Yep. There is one point, actually, you're saying that, uh, that I'd like to make. Yep. Uh, while I have gave it a 10, I've gave it a 10 basically on its standalone appearance. Yep. And I haven't really focused on what it's going to be like for the rest of the series. But there is a good point there. Um, the BBC marketing for this series has been abysmal. I did not like it. It gave the impression that mm. we were going to get a bad series. A bit and that wasn't. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this episode shoved that away, which tells me that um, they know what they're doing. It's just the marketing team probably didn't. Um, but That's I think that there's, there's actually a good, a good thing here. As you saw through the trailer, terrible choice of music, terrible um, choices of clips. And that was what gave that lighthearted tone. But throughout that episode, with the atmospheric music and the constant feeling of suspension, what's yeah. going to happen next, plus the scene of cinematography, gave that impression, you know, that it was a darkened tone. It felt... Yeah. It wasn't as light-hearted that we thought it was going to be like, and I liked that, and I want that to stay yeah. throughout the series. So if we find in the next episode and it starts getting a little too light, then okay, I might start changing my opinion. But we'll wait what see. I can see, what I get for what I can see, we're onto a good, yeah. good start, and I like that. That's good. Good. Right, well, uh, that is it for our review. Do join us again next week for the review of the second episode of Doctor Who I believe Series it's 11. The Ghost Monument. The Ghost Monument. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> so until then, see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, do please leave a like or comment below on this video. If you want more, on Jack's side is the last video and the recommended video that we've suggested to you. To stay tuned for more, on John's right is the link to our channel so you can subscribe. And also, we have a link to our website if you want more information about who we are and what we do. Until next time, take care, stay safe. And remember, let your guitar out. Bye bye, guys.